Welcome to the DFS Build MLB Edition. I'm Kevin Roberts, ready to go over the eight-game main slate at DraftKings. For MLB, there is a six-game turbo slate, so if you want to really get into it, you can definitely do that. I'm just covering the main slate, the one I'll be playing, and I'm going to give you my favorite plays, my favorite stacks, and uh, hopefully help you out. If I do help you out, please give this video a like and also consider subscribing to the channel. Both those things really help me and the channel a lot. Uh, and as always, if you have any extra questions or you know want a little bit of extra help, you can leave a comment in the uh, video you know channel uh, where the video is, and I'll see if I can get to it. No promises there because I'm not yet to the point where I am readily available around lock just yet. This video is sponsored by DFS Hero. Really nice uh, tool for projections and ownership and lineup optimizing, all that stuff. Really cool. You can get 15% off discount if you click our link in the video description below. All right, let's dive right into it. Uh, we did have a couple of hits yesterday. I mean, I I was pretty much screwed from the from the jump because Pablo Lopez could not figure out the freaking Washington Nationals. I did mention a nice sprinkling of the Angels should be in order, and they went nuts. They basically are the only reason why I was able to cash at all. Um, and I also mentioned the Royals, who did really well. So hopefully you were on the Angels a little bit or the Royals, um, but nothing else really seemed to work. And that's how it's going to go in baseball sometimes. So just be prepared for that kind of volatility. Um, but, you know, for the most part, I do still try to approach slates from a logical perspective as much as I can. I think anytime you have a really, really chalky pitcher, it absolutely makes sense to target him a little bit, no matter how good they are. Um, but, you know, if there's a lot of options on the board, a lot of different ways you can go, you can start kind of taking out, you know, bad pitchers or, you know, um, offenses that are in bad spots. So let's start off with the Yankees and Mariners right away. I'm not super interested in either um, offense just because the pitching is pretty good here. Uh, Clark Schmidt has been really good on the year. Um, he's honestly one of my favorite pitchers on the slate. Uh, he's coming in with a 33% ownership, and he's in the optimal lineup 36% of the time. Um, so – He's one of the best projecting pitchers. I think he's a second on the slate. So I want him in my in a lot of my lineups. Um, so naturally, I don't have a ton of interest in the Mariners. Uh, worth noting, obviously, like Taylor was saying yesterday, the Mariners do see a jump. Park upgrade at Yankee Stadium, no doubt about it. But there's not really many clear ways to pick on Clark Schmidt, and he's obviously pitching really well, 2.49 ERA, 5-1 on the year, 55 strikeouts, averaging almost 20 fantasy points per game. He... Really has not had a bad, like a really bad game yet. He had um, a couple eh, games earlier in the year, but he's been very, very good. Uh, fresh off of a 35-point fantasy outing against the Twins. So it's baseball. The, the, the Mariners do have some power and they get a park up, upgrade. So if Clark Schmidt is going to be chalky, you absolutely can stack the Mariners. I just prefer the Clark Schmidt side of it. So uh, will I get a sprinkling of Mariners because he's 33% owned still? You better believe I will. I just will not be... Uh, going at them very hard. On the other side, you can always stack the Yankees if you so choose. Brian Wu is a pretty good pitcher. Um, so I don't really want Brian Wu against the Yankees in this park, but I also don't really want to pick on him with the Yankees either. Um, we'll be long. We have the White Sox and the Blue Jays. Um, uh, you see uh, Kikuchi is coming in with the best projection, which tends to happen when you're facing the White Sox. Um, so no real, no real complaints with using him whatsoever. Um, the White Sox come in with a collective 23% whiff rate against lefties. That'll do, especially since Kikuchi is whiffing about 26% of the time. And there's really no obvious way to attack him this year. He's been really, really good. Um, so the only issue is he's 9.3 K. Um, but that isn't even really an issue because the White Sox don't scare me. Um, I'm a little less inclined to target Kikuchi with White Sox stacks as leverage uh, than I would be if I was, you know, going up against um, Clark Schmidt because obviously that's a really nice park at Yankee Stadium. But he's going to be 42% owned. I mean, if he's going to be 42% owned, I think you got to have some White Sox stacks in there just so you can feel a little good about rostering Kikuchi a ton. Um, so, yeah, I like him a lot. Uh, it's going to be tough to fit guys at that price range together, but certainly not something I'm opposed to doing. Um, but yeah, I would leverage a little bit. On the other side, you have Garrett Crochet, who's been a, just awesome this year. He's the most expensive pitcher on the board, but he does not have the best projection. 
He's on the road against the Jays. Um, probably noisy, but worth noting that he averages 25 fantasy points per game at home and only 10 fantasy points per game on the road. So he's not really going to carry that much ownership at 14%. So I don't really feel like picking on him with the Blue Jays, who've been very, very underwhelming as a whole. And if he's going to be the guy he's been, um, that just seems like a stupid way to get different on the slate. Um, obviously, it's baseball. Anything can happen. I just won't be firing up the Jays. They do not strike out a lot. That is undeniable. But they're facing a pitcher who has like a 35% whiff for whiff rate on the year 37 against lefties 33 against righties so they certainly could end up striking out a lot in this game i do not have an issue with crochet at all but since he's the most expensive pitcher i probably won't go there i will just say if you don't have interest in kikuchi as the chalkiest pitcher i mean he's an instant leverage play or just a nice pivot in general um basically the same price you do drop in projection obviously um and he's only in the optimal lineup 2% of the time. But decent enough tournament play based off of the K upside he's displayed, you know, throughout the season. Uh, yeah, but as far as the offenses, it's really just a little bit of interest in the White Sox as leverage on Kikuchi where you're not using Kikuchi. And if I've butchered that last name, so be it. That's possible. I do it. Something I do. All right, we got Tigers and Royals. Alec Marsh and Casey Mize towing the rubber for those respective teams. Um, not super interested in those guys just because they're not really that good. Uh, Alec Marsh keeps surviving. He keeps getting by for sure. Um, let's see. Let me find this game on DraftKings as well. Alec Marsh is a good price and he's been good. The numbers are, have been good. 2.43 ERA. He's averaging 16 fantasy points on the year in three of his last four games. He has 19 plus fantasy points. So he, he's finding a way even though he seems like he's a guy we can pick on uh, 10 or actually I'm looking at the wrong one there. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um, yeah. Alec Marsh, you know, historically 280 ISO last year against lefties, 414 Wobo last year, 241 ISO against righties, equal opportunity, sad sack, as I say. Uh, the only problem is the Tigers do whiff at almost a 22% clip and they're still the Tigers. So I kind of lean more on the Alec Marsh side of this one just because He's a good price, and he's um, he's been he's been producing lately. So I think he's fine. He's certainly not a priority for me. I don't feel great about it, especially. I believe the wind is blowing out in that game. Let me double check for you. Um, Tigers Royals, as was the case yesterday when I liked the Royals, and it is blowing out to right at 13 miles per hour. So yeah, I don't I don't love Detroit here, but I really don't I don't feel comfortable with Alec Marsh either um so last year he was just getting blasted every which way this year he's been pretty hard on lefties um the only downside he's not really striking them out at, a, at an elite rate and he's uh his ground ball rate dips by five percent facing lefties but the real problem is the power on the right side he's giving up a 250 iso so you can probably hit from the right side of the plate for the tigers if you want to and of course with the wind factor and the fact that I just don't – I think Marsh is probably going to get had at some point. I think the Tigers are viable. I just don't really want to stack them up personally. On the other side are the Royals against Casey Mize. Obviously, once a top prospect and a talented pitcher. Um, he's been better on the year. Let's see how he's doing. 3.5 ERA, respectable. He's had a couple of good games. Um, but this is not the place to use him at all. A, a decent value at 6.7K. But the Royals are not really a fun team to pick on. They have a lot of power. They don't strike out a ton. Um, and the wind is blowing out in this game. So obviously, let's start with the – oh, wait, it's blowing out to right. So, well, the splits favored the righties for the Tigers. But I would I would imagine we're going to want to favor lefties here with the wind blowing hard out to right. So uh, luckily, the Royals have a lot of those. Actually, the Tigers do too. But the Royals have a lot more appealing ones. So I would start with the Royals lefties and Royal stacks overall look pretty good here. Um, all right, here we go. Let's see. I just got a message. Sorry. That distracted me for a second. All right. So onto the Cubs and Braves game, which is going to be Uber chalk. Uh, let's just head over to the stack IQ really quick to see just how real that is. And by the way, the Tigers coming as mega chalk and I get it. It's Alec Marsh and the wind's blowing out. So again, I'm okay with Tigers, but if they're going to be chalky, if Tigers are going to be chalk, that's chalk. I'm going to fade. I would much rather dip down to the Wrigley chalk 
because it's really hard to ignore Wrigley. Uh, Braves and Cubs both come in at the second and third chalkiest teams. They should still be the chalky teams. The only thing is Detroit is going to be way cheaper as a, as a uh, stack. So that's why. Uh, but Braves and Cubs are certainly much preferred. Charlie Morton, uh, as old as he has become, he is still a pretty good pitcher, but I will not be using him here. Uh, Javier Assad has been not – he's not been a gas can by any means for the Cubs this year. Um, but he's not really somebody I would trust in this setting. And the setting is uh, major wins. We have 23, I think, 25 mile per, mile per hour wins going out uh, at Wrigley. So, yeah, stack your Braves and Cubs, whichever way you like. However you want to do it, obviously they're going to be chalky, so you can definitely go away from that or just – However you want to do it, I don't think it's bad chalk, though. I think this is one of those slates where, especially with the Tigers up there in ownership, I will gladly go attack this slate from both sides of the Wrigley game at will. And if they're chalky, they're chalky. I mean, you can stack this whole game, to be honest. It's probably going to be pretty explosive. Um, of course, sometimes wind, wind blowing out Wrigley does not work out. So you could fade – uh, one side or both sides and just go attack some other offenses because there are other offenses in really good spots. I'm just probably going to eat some of that chalk and get different with my secondary stacks and pitching. That's probably what I'm going to do. Um, if you want to gain leverage by even with eating the chalk, I guess you could favor the Cubs here um, just because they're going to be slightly less owned as a stack. And Charlie Morton's giving up a 348 Woba, 160 ISO, and walking at a 12% clip against lefties. The Cubs have, let's see, one, two, three, four projected lefties in their lineup, and all these guys hit for power. We got 178 ISO collectively for the Cubs. They do strike out, um, but I don't really care about that with this much wind. All right, we got Orioles and Cardinals. I don't even really want to talk about this game that much because there is um, PPD risk. Uh, it's really right now it's more at a likely delay, but it's just not a game I'm really excited to go after just because it's more in a uh, pitching park. Worth noting, though, that it's going to be very, very uh, hot there and the wind's blowing out to left field at 15 to 20 miles per hour. So because of that, we certainly can focus on the righties from either side of this game if you want to stack it up. Lance Lynn is traditionally a guy we want to uh, slap around with lefty bats. So maybe we don't pay that much attention to the win there, or maybe we just do a full Orioles stack and feel good about it. If you think the game's going to be fine and you're not worried about the park factor here, uh, Orioles and Cardinals are both very viable. I would just, what I definitely would not do is use the pitching uh, because obviously delay or PPT would be problematic for pitching. Um, and obviously the wind and weather does not bode well for them whatsoever. So I'm mostly going to ignore this game or not ignore, but I'm going to be underweight on it just because I don't like messing with weather games. Um, and I definitely will be staying away from the pitching. The halos worked out last night. Can they work out again? I think it's possible. Javier, uh, Christian Javier uh, had a really good outing in his last game. Uh, let me just pull this up so I can have full information for you. I mean, he hasn't been that good on the year, but he had 31 fantasy points in his last game. He has 21 plus fantasy points in two of his last three games, but one of those games was Sam Rogin at negative 16. So, as talented of a pitcher as he can be, he also can be gotten to. Um, it's a small sample size, but on the year, he has a 17% walk rate against lefties, just a 15% K rate, and a 231 ISO. So, the Angels got some power. They had a collective 164 ISO here, even with Mark, Mike Trout out. And they have one, two, three, four, five lefties in the projected lineup. Uh, two of those lefties aren't super scary right now, but that you know Javier still has to go deal with them, and um, that walk rate is very, very concerning. And they don't strike out that much, so definitely on the halo side of this one for sure. Not very interested in Javier, uh, especially with his price at about eight point six k. So Angels again look good in my opinion. Uh, hard to ignore the Astros. They also look very good. Griffin Gas Canning has a 15% K rate against lefties, which obviously isn't great. A 211 ISO, 364 Woba, uh, and a 53% hard hit rate. None of that sounds good when you're facing guys like Kyle Tucker and Jordan Alvarez. Um, and then you can just kind of stack all the way through with the Astros if you really want to. 
um, just because Griffin Canyon is a talented pitcher, but he hasn't been great on the year. Um, and the Astros don't whiff that much. So even though he's 5.5K, I don't really have interest in going dumpster diving uh, with Cannon here. So like the Angels, a good deal. And obviously the Astros look good. I would I would probably rather stick with the left side, like uh, with Jordan and um, Kyle Tucker for the most part. Uh, but you can certainly go full stack with the Astros and feel pretty good about it. All right, Rockies and Athletics. I don't really foresee myself being very interested in this one just because the Rockies aren't very good and they're on the road outside of Coors. It's just like an easy cross off usually for me, um, you know, and if the Rockies go and score 12 runs and go like full Washington nationals or whatever, like you can't really predict that. Like it is what it is. It just doesn't feel like I'm getting a lot of bang for my buck. If I go and put a lot of lineups in there with Rockies in there and like, what am I gonna do? Go five Rockies and three Cubs or five Rockies and three uh, Braves. Like, I don't feel good about that because then those Cubs and Braves are going to go, you know, destroy go full skirt, scorched earth. And then you got these Rockies just weighing me down probably. So you can do anything in baseball, but I don't want to do that. Um, but let's look at this game. Anyways, obviously you have Cal Quantrill for the Rockies. He's going up against the athletics who do actually have a considerable amount of power, 199 collective ISO. So I do like the athletics a little bit, um, but they also strike out. So he actually at 6K flat is not the worst SP2 out there. He's showing up in the optimal 23% of the time, coming in with 20% ownership. You know, Oakland is just one of those teams that they're they're usually fairly cheap. Uh, their best players are kind of pricey, I think, at this point. They're all over 4K. So you can definitely look at Brent Rooker, uh, Shea Langliers, um, Zach Geloff. They project – uh, decently, they all have north of 246 ISOs, but uh, Cal Quantrill is really more susceptible against the left side of the plate 17% K rate, 11% walk rate, 163 ISO. It's all coming against lefties this year. So, <clears throat> with that in mind, I, I prefer Quantrill over the athletics by quite a bit. Uh, Aaron Brooks is a 35 year old pitcher who was in the minors, he got called up by Oakland to pitch in this game. So Certainly, my rant about the Rockies not being a good stack aside, you can pick on an old pitcher who's probably on his way out of the league if you so choose. Um, however, the projected lineup they have has a 27% whiff rate, and it's a pitcher park. So I'm not racing to play Rockies, even though I don't want um, much to do with Aaron Brooks. If I use a pitcher from this game, it's probably going to be Cal Quantrill. Uh, but you better believe I'll have some Oakland leverage stacks just in case. All right, last game of the night, we got Arizona visiting the Dodgers. Gavin Stone for L.A. against Brandon Fott. Um, no, I don't want Brandon Fott against the Dodgers. That's a big, big F no for me. Uh, he has issues against lefties. Last year, he offered a 245 ISO and 362 Woba. Not good. And this year, it's gotten a little bit better, but still just a 19% K rate, 170 ISO. Still not great. Um, so, yeah, when you're doing that and you're facing – a loaded lefty offense like LA. Yeah. Dodgers look awesome. So uh, I don't need to tell you on the Dodgers much more than that. They look really, really good. Arizona going up against Gavin stone. He's kind of like a bend, but don't break kind of guy. Um, let's see where he's been at here. 14 fantasy points per game on the year. He's only had one truly bad game. The rest is just kind of there and getting by. Um, he's, he's more like a help in real life to the Dodgers at this point. He's kind of just suppressing runs. He's not giving up a lot of power, um, not walking righties like at all, 3% walk rate against righties, but he's also not striking anybody out. So if you want to stack the Arizona Diamondbacks against Gavin Stone, you can because he has a 15% walk rate and just a 15% K rate against lefties. So if they're getting on, they can start funneling in runs here pretty quickly. Um, I just don't see where the power is coming from. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, Corbin Carroll, Jock Peterson, uh, even Jake McCarthy. I mean, they have lefties and some lefty power here and they don't strike out too much. So <clears throat> Arizona as a little uh, late game hammer that will be pretty unowned, I think, um, is viable, but not necessarily on the top of my radar. All right, let's do a quick recap here. So for pitching at a high level, um, Kikuchi, Schmidt, and uh, let's see, who was the other guy I was looking at before? Well, Kikuchi and Schmidt are look, looking like really good payups. I prefer them over Garrett Crochet, although Garrett Crochet is totally in play. 
And then Cattle Contrail is probably my favorite SP2. But because of that, and I don't really like that that much, um, I think going with Clark Schmidt and Kikuchi together is a, a pretty good idea. The only issue is how viable is that if you're looking at Wrigley where you know a lot of these guys are really pricey. So with that in mind, and by the way, you can do whatever you want at pitcher. I'm just saying with the guys that I feel the best about here. If we look at the stack IQ percentages, um, I mean, I'm in pretty, I'm in very much agreement as far as looking at how logical it is for some of these stacks to pop off. Tigers do look good, but I don't want chalky Tigers. Braves and Cubs look great at Wrigley. I don't mind eating the chalk there, but if we can get different with a different stack and feel really, really good about it, again, you can fade that chalk if you want to. Houston looks great. <clears throat> not into not into the Blue Jays. Uh, like I said, Mariners in a park upgrade is fine, but not super into that. Royals with that weather, they look good. Dodgers. Unowned Dodgers to end the slate? Come on now. Okay, so if everybody's going to be on the Tigers and the R- Wrigley game, you can get different in a hurry and still feel reasonably good about it with the Dodgers to close things out. So if I'm not going at Wrigley – or Houston, or the uh, Detroit KC game, the Dodgers look just amazing. And honestly, I'm going to be way overweight on the Dodgers, and I'm probably going to be a little bit underweight on the Wrigley game just because, I mean, there is history of these Wrigley and Coors games just blowing up in our faces. So um, the Dodgers look very, very interesting at that uh, projected ownership. And as we go down the line here, I would I would do a sprinkling of the White Sox just for leverage on um, – who's Kikuchi facing them because I'm going to have a lot of Kikuchi. So I don't want to go in there with no white Sox. Um, Unowned Yankees in in a hitter's park. I think that's cool. That's fine. And like I said, the halos look uh, decent too. All right. That does it for me. A lot of good stacks tonight. Uh, You don't have to eat that chalk if you don't want to. There's a lot of, a lot of good spots that we can attack. Um, But this is one of those rare slates where I actually don't mind eating that chalk just because the wind blowing out that much at Wrigley is really hard to fully get away from for sure. The pitching pool, as far as a reliability standpoint, is pretty tight for me. I don't feel really, really good about several of these options, and the value is not very, you know, it's not very appealing. So if I can, I'm going to try to um, get up there with two safe pitchers. Uh, but if I'm going down, I think Cal Contrail is probably the best SP2 to pair with one of those high end guys. All right, that's going to do it for me. Hopefully, this helps you out a little bit. Hopefully, you can get a big win. Baseball has been very hit or miss all year long. It's just a high variant sport. It's really tough to get right. I mean, one night you will fade the chalk and the chalk goes absolutely bonkers. The next night, Pablo Lopez gets blasted by the Washington Nationals. So that's how it goes. All right. Good luck to you. Thanks for watching. If I helped, give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time. Hopefully, we'll see you at the top of the